Greetings, YouTube. Danny Staten here. On the Daily Dan blog, you know I love saying that. I'm flashing back to Tom Corbett, Space Cadet from the 1950s, a 10-cent Dell comic book. This is number nine. It come out in 1954, based on the original classic old TV series. You know I love doing comic books based on TV shows. And here's one. If you remember Tom Corbett's Space Cadet, you're probably really freaking old. Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. Space Academy USA in the world. They blast through the millions of miles from Earth to far flung stars and brave the dangers of cosmic frontiers. Protecting the liberties of the planet, safeguarding the cause of universal peace in the age of the conquest of space. What? Well, we got a date behind the Met call, remember? Oh, sure. Hey, look, Roger, are you still off on that kick? What's the matter, Junior? Can a guy buy a friend dinner? Ah. So, so, I, I guess we're off to the 50s when a guy could buy a guy dinner. Oh, boy. Well, it's the Space Academy, University of Planets at the Space Academy. And on the inside cover, we get some really cool action photos from the original TV series. It might be the only one we get in the book. And by the way, this comic book has very few, if any, commercials. So as our Space Cadet story opens up, Commander Rory here has got a message retrieved. From Space Communications. Oh, boy. So in full panels, brought to you by the Daily Dan blog, we see Tom Corbett and his sidekick Roger being informed by Commander Roy that a strange message has been intercepted from the deep recesses of outer space. Using this combobulated contraption that can pick up communications from thousands of light years away. The language sources decode it, but they do not understand the message. But they know where it's coming from. That's right, in a deep, dark quadrant of space, somewhere 30 light years away, on the third planet from its sun, much like ours, a strange message is sent. And it causes confusion, it causes chaos amongst the space cadets as they're fighting over the message to see who gets to translate it. Commander Harper shows up and criticizes Roy and Tom Corbett space cadet for fighting over the message and says, don't you worry, us at command will handle decoding this message. So he sends the space cadets over to the isometric, got some, whatever, the isometric slab, stellar cartography, that's right. The Tom Corbett and space cadet crew are going to stellar cartography, whatever that is, that's a Star Trek thing, a stellar cartography, so they can plot the location of the planet that these strange messages has come from deep in the dark recesses. Of outer space! Ah, before I get started too much on this, I want to commend the incredibly cool, realistic art in this comic book. I love the old comic books from the 50s. The art in these comic books is exceptional for the time. But anyway, Tom Corbett and Space Cadets are getting their ship ready. That's right. They're doing the play launch. They're doing the inspection. They're planning their trip. They're going to the planet. Commander Roy has a bad feeling. Commander Roy always has a bad feeling. So in full panels, once again, brought to you by the Daily Dan blog. Commander Corbett takes control of his little ship on a one-way mission deep to the stars. Will he make it back? As Tom Corbett 
and little Roger are headed off into space to track the source of the strange interstellar signal, which remains undecoded. So as the ship rockets off at warp speed, well, they had some warp speed back then, they go into a cryogenic, cryogenic suspension. They're going to take a nap while they're in space and listen to some groovy tunes. And that does for three weeks. Till they arrive on the outskirts of the solar system containing the strange signal that remains undecoded. Now, this signal might be saying stay away. Radiation could be saying stay away. We had a war. Could be saying don't come here, but they don't care. They're going to investigate it anyway because they're Tom Corbett, space cadet. So very strangely, as the ship circles the planet, they can find no, no traces of life, no signs of advanced civilization anywhere. Roy decides to make him some meth and get real stoned. A what? No, that's not going to work. What we're going to have to do is land and have a look around. So they begin to set down as the ship slowly creeps to the surface. As they hit the surface, they break out the phase rifles. That's right. We got some phase rifles from Star Trek. We're going to have a look around. After an extensive search of the planet, they have found nothing. They go to investigate a small, well, a giant lake that is formed on the planet. They're having a look. I can't believe it. it's actual liquid water. No doubt it's water. Why would they be so much water on this planet? Because it rains here, you idiots. And as they look down through the water, deep down in the bottom of the murky, the murky depths, it appears that a city's down there. What? A sunken city? Have they found the planet Atlantis? I guess it makes sense on a desert planet. Where would you build your city? Under the water. Let's go back up in space and contact Space Academy and see what they say about this development. So as Space Academy responds, telling them you must investigate the city under the water, Tom Corbett and the space crew decide to descend. And as they begin to descend... A vast armada of UFOs encircle their ship with a warning to land peacefully. Do not start nothing. You have entered the land of the fish face people. What? Fish face people? Oh, that ain't their name. They're, quite, they're called Quatacos. Quatacos. Ah! What the, I can't even pronounce that word. Oh my God. We'll just call them fish people. And the fish people are saying, you must land peacefully. Follow us down. And since this comic book apparently don't come with no commercials, uh, I guess Daily Dan will have to add his own. Some crazy eyes back in the 1950s, right? Now would be a real good special time to give a shout out to my main man, Thrash Pondo Pons. You know, Pons, he saved every one of us. And our good stuff community leader, Dave Sunstorm, and his incredible brother, Stephen. Dave and Stephen Sunstorm here on YouTube. Be sure to check them out. And, of course, my main man, Pat McCormick, at the Golden Rage of TV here on YouTube. He's got some really cool interview stuff coming out you want to check up. And while I'm at it, let me give a shout-out to BK on the air, Big Guys 45s. <sighs> my pluck is everywhere the nostalgic 
podcast and the retro nerd girl and my main dude, Corey, at Corey Comedy's channel. The big shout outs from the good stuff, guys. Now in full panels, brought to you by the Daily Dan blog, we return to our program. Wah, wah. So under escort by the alien menace, Tom Corbett and the guys from Space Academy are lowered down deep, deep, deep into the depths of the ocean, into a water world where they must wear their helmets and hang out with fish face and the fish people. And oh my God, they're getting taken to the underwater city. Oh, gross. Yes, Tom Corbett and the Space Cadets meet the Council of Twelve. Twelve individuals who are astonished to find out there's life in the universe. The life on Earth. They did not know we existed. And we would not know they existed if we had not picked up some of their Roman transmissions. And now we are the, the Tom Corbett guys are being accused of being spies for an unknown planet. As the Council of Twelve soldiers want to shoot them down, but... The Horned One stops them. But yet they're planning to put Tom Corbett and the Space Cadets under arrest for being spies. They tried this, but Tom and Commander Rory go for their weapons, which are quickly zapped from their hands by the really quick, efficient fish police. Oh, God. Yeah, they go all the way across the universe to wind up in a water world dealing with Aquaman and the fish people. I'm really kind of disappointed in this story. I bet you are too. But what you expect from the 1950s? No. Oh. At least we got some good art as, as they're made comfortable in their cell awaiting the trial. A fish lady shows up. Wonk, wonk, fish lady. So we're getting the I Love Lucy spirit. Space fish lady who says that the, the the council of twelve are about to be overthrown. Here, have some lunch and we'll talk later. What? Yeah, there's rebellion planning up on the old planet. So Tom Corbett and the space cadets are gonna have to make a break for it. That's right. They sneak out and they find their little uniforms. They put on their little space helmets and they dip back into the water. Space witch. Gives them a hand and helps them on the way as they go by the zoo and see the giant collection of mutant space water creatures. You know, I thought they was trying to escape, but apparently she's just taking them on a tour. Eh, they're being watched. They're being surveilled. They're being tested. They're trying to find out what they know. It's all an evil plot by the horned fish guy. The horned fish guy. You know, I really should learn this guy's name, but I have not seen it nowhere in the comic book. You know, they are really sly about showing people's names in these comic books. That kind of kicks me in the head that you just have to call them Fish People or Commander Z or whatever. Kind of looks like old Lucy over here getting a little bit of hots for old Tom Corbett Space Cadet. You know, Tom Corbett kind of reminds me of Captain Kirk a little bit as all the chicks want to want to nestle up to old Tom Corbett Space Cadet. Yeah, as they're being constantly hounded by the fish people who are keeping them under close surveillance. But I have an idea. And his idea is to join forces with the Earthers to help overthrow the Council of Evil. And that's true. Ha, ha, ha. They laugh about their plan. As Tom Corbett and the Space Cadets join the rebellion, they show them how to make some Mata cocktails. They're going to teach them how to throw a rebellion. Earth style. And in full panels, brought to you by the Daily Dan blog. You are really going to be disappointed with this. I know I am. They plan their rebellion. They plan their rebellion some more. They creep around and collect weapons. They get everything ready and the attack begins and they blow up the Council of Twelve Space in one freaking panel. I guess you had to keep violence to a minimum in 1954 as everybody rejoices at the defeating of the evil empire. Tom Corbett breathes a sigh of relief as the rebels take control of the base. As the bad guy fish people are put under arrest by the rebellious new leaders of fish world. Horn dude is sentenced to a thousand years in a cell. Oh, my God. A thousand years? How long these people lived? He was a commander. And Tom Corbett and Commander Roy get the appreciation of the fish people. 
And that's the way they ended in this tattered, torn, dismal nightmare of a comic book we've been through as it goes into black and white for all the rejoicing and celebration as we prepare to return to Earth, which they do drastically in one scene. I have to admit, this is the comic book that keeps giving. Look, they finished it up on the back pa- On the back page is actually the last panels of the comic book as they show pictures from their trip to space. And... Rory isn't impressed as he rips it up. And that's my look at Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, number nine from 1954. I hope you enjoyed it, but you probably didn't. Look, some ass wrote on my comic book. He called himself the Master, Master Johnson. Yeah, uh, it makes me want to hunt down Master Jimmy Johnson and do bad things to him. So that's my look at this dismal, classic, nightmare of a comic book from the 1950s, based on a really cool old TV show which was a hundred times better than the comic book, but I'm digging that space art on the cover and it's going to look good on the wall. That's about the only reason I deal with this anyways, because I like the, the wall art of comic books. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that stupid little bell. And I'll be back next time with another crappy comic book review. Frog over, dudes.